it's now possible to carry around two cell plans, two data plans, in your one pocket, one device. Hi, I'm Chris with the Mobile Internet Resource Center here to give a status update on the state of dual SIMs and eSIMs, in particular with uh, Apple's iPhone and the new 12.1.1 um, iPhone OS update. So when this update out, uh, the issues that the carriers had with supporting eSIM uh, seems to be resolved and we've now had in the last week AT&T, Verizon and now T-Mobile are now officially supporting adding eSIMs for Apple's new line of 2018 phones um, allowing you to have both a physical SIM card one of these little things installed into the phone with one line of service and an eSIM running on the same phone at the same time with a second line of service. And that second line of service could be a second carrier, could be a second phone number with your primary carrier, um, could be a, a data only plan while traveling, uh, you know, all sorts of flexibility to have these two lines active on your device at once. Um, but what does this actually mean and how is this practical? This is really handy um, for traveling, if carrying around a work and a personal number, or, well, the most important thing for a lot of travelers is carrier redundancy. It is so valuable to have two data plans with you um, if one carrier goes down and or is saturated, being able to easily switch to your backup carrier and still get a data connection. And we actually experienced that while experimenting with eSIM just the other day. There was a street festival here in Sanford where we happened to be traveling through. Um, AT&T's network got saturated, could not get online. And with well, two taps, I was able to switch to T-Mobile and was getting went from zero speed test results to 90 megabits per second down. So that kind of flexibility in your pocket, being able to change carriers without fumbling around, popping out one SIM, using the eject tool, switching to another, is really handy. And well, these SIMs are both in active states on the network, so you can still get incoming calls and text messages on one SIM even if you're using a data plan on another. So very handy. Now the status update on the specific carriers, they're all doing it slightly different and there's a few little gotchas to understand and we'll show you a few of the, the tips and tricks here but first what out the gate was AT&T. AT&T is letting you set up any AT&T plan um, move, including moving existing numbers over um, onto an eSIM but you have to go into an AT&T store to do it and they will give you a little special card like this with a QR code on it and then you scan that card with uh, um, the cellular setup tool and that on the iPhone control panel and that sets up the eSIM. It's a little bit awkward that you're basically having to go to an AT&T store or they will mail you this card via snail mail to set up something that should be completely digital and eliminates the need to go to a store but that's the process you have to go through. Um, and tip we discovered is your phone has to be on a network, whether Wi-Fi or cellular already, to scan this card effectively. There's no good error messages otherwise. In Verizon's case, slightly different. Um, Verizon's actually got an app that does everything and they actually even advertise um, activate your new line through the app, no in-store visit necessary. Um, in Verizon's case, all done in the app. You have to do a few steps to go through. Um, and they're only supporting postpaid lines. So if you want to do a prepaid line, that's not something that um, Verizon is supporting. And they're making it very easy. They're encouraging you to port in numbers from other carriers and you know, pushing their promotion of get $150 porting credit to bring a number over from another carrier to eSIM on Verizon. Kind of cool. Uh, T-Mobile just released their app and they're kind of the exact opposite of Verizon in that their app, again, all app based, no stores, no sims, no little cards to scan, um, but it's prepaid lines only. So you have your choice of uh, three prepaid plans on um, T-Mobile, including a tourist plan um, designed for people coming to the U.S. just for short periods of time. But, well, in T-Mobile's case, uh, postpaid lines are still coming soon, not supported quite yet. There are also two other um, uh, eSIM plans that U.S. Uh, customers can get. One's from uh, TruePhone and GigSky. Those are focused mostly on 
giving you international travel options. They're data-only plans that you can activate very easily when you're going to another country and activate that into your eSIM slot. Now, a few catches of, well, what happens if you have an eSIM and you want to put another one, another eSIM in? You can actually have multiple eSIMs installed at once and multiple plans, but only one of those can be active. So you'll have to switch which plan is active, but you can have both your physical SIM and one of those eSIMs active at the same time. And I'll show you a few things about how you can actually manage this. So under um, settings on an iPhone, you can go through and you will see um, settings, click on cellular, and you can see how many plans you have, which ones are on, you can give them labels, and then add a cellular plan. The add a cellular plan just gives you a camera view to scan a QR code. In this case, this code's already been used, so it's invalid. Um, you've got some options that you can, under cellular data, you can choose which one of your plans your data goes through. So, very handy if you've got a, a voice plan and you want to have a separate data plan, or if you're out, out and about and your primary data plan is getting really poor performance, switch to your backup. Uh, a feature that's a little confusing is called cellular data switching, is when you're on a voice call, only one radio is active at a time, so um, you'll either have no data if you're on a voice call on your secondary line, or you can say cellular data switching, turn that on, and it will mean your data will follow your voice line. So if you get a call on Verizon and at and is your primary data line, during the duration of that call, your data will be routed over Verizon. Um, that way you never lose your data connection. Um, then you've got a few options when you're looking at each individual plan. You can get them labels, you can do your typical stuff of turning on and off Wi-Fi calling, etc. And now when you're actually making calls or anything, you've got a, just a little bit of time to change what is your outgoing call. You, so between your personal and secondary lines, if you're using it for business and personal, very easy to change that. And you can actually assign contacts in the address book to have default to certain calls. So you can have your co-workers always go through your business line, your family always go through your personal line. It's kind of handy, pretty neatly thought through. So that's kind of an update on the state of dual SIM, dual standby, and eSIM in the Apple world. But now, what about Androids? Is this coming to Androids? In Androids, there's actually, Google has um, been using eSIMs in the Pixel 2 and the Pixel 3, but only for Google Fi service. So the ability to have an AT&T plan or a Verizon plan or any of these other plans does not exist yet. But um, Google is has said that they are working with the carriers and they're going to support, start supporting eSIMs for more than just Google Fi later in 2019. It actually seems like Sprint might be the first one that they support. Um, Sprint is also working on support for the Apple way of doing things. And there are, of course, other phones that exist out there that have dual physical SIM slots, where you actually have space to put two of these inside, and they'll give you some of the same capabilities of dual lines and dual active stuff. Those sort of phones are incredibly rare in the U.S. They exist in Android world, um, but they're mostly on kind of oddball imports, so not a lot of options uh, other than waiting for uh, eSIMs to spread spread the love. This is a really interesting kind of development. It's really handy to have uh, multiple lines of service in one device and will this will probably become very very mainstream going forward into 2019 and 2020. That's the update.